First Church Schroeder, where everyone is family. Here at First Church, we have a passion for drawing people closer to God. We hope you enjoy our Memorial Day service as we celebrate the sacrifices made for our freedom. Memorial Day is a day of remembrance. This is when I think back of the friends I lost during the Korean conflict out of my high school in Fairbanks, Alaska. My buddies, soldiers, served with me in Vietnam. We had some of those that were unable to fulfill their destiny. It's a time for reflection. I was Fortunately enough, I got to serve in Vietnam, and that's been quite a while back. But if I had to do again, do over, I would do it again before I see my family. Married. And uh, there's a lot people should consider of what these people, men and women, has given their lives for this. And uh, to where we'd be able to do what we're doing today, have our freedom that we have, and spend the time with our families and celebrate like we do. It's a time to celebrate those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Uh, a lot of times, uh, as being a veteran, people come up and thank me for my service during that time, which I would never um, demean someone by, by telling them otherwise. But thank you. But it's really not about me, and it's not about those who are alive and serving, but it's those who have given the ultimate sacrifice um, in, in wars past, current, uh, I mean, even on the battlefield today. Uh, so, and this Memorial Day, I hope you'll take the opportunity to remember those who have served and who have given ultimate sacrifice. As a veteran, I would like to say that we are proud to honor all the veterans, particularly our congregation who have served in the armed forces. We have a special day for that, Veterans Day. But Memorial Day is a little different in that we think and remember those in our armed forces who gave the ultimate sacrifice. So today, for Memorial Day, We'd like to turn our thoughts to them and in our hearts thank them for what they've given them and their families who have paid that sacrifice for us. I'd like to congratulate all our veterans and today let's especially remember those who gave their lives for our country. It's a time that <clears throat> I remember all our many soldiers that went to war, those that served in peacetime also, and those that were wounded, those that lost limbs, and those that made the ultimate sacrifice. <clears throat> so I think about that a lot, because not only did I serve, but I worked at Fort Polk for the last 10 or so years, and I drove a bus, and I hauled our soldiers back and forth to and from deployments. But it was, it was very hard because some of them I knew I carried them off to war and, and then I would see a sign, you know, in memory of so-and-so and, -so, and I would remember that soldier rode my bus. I carried them to, to be deployed to war. So our soldiers are very special to me and their families. My era was the Vietnam era. I lost many friends. And that's what we have to remember, the ones who have died for the freedoms we have right now in honor and respect to them. And that is the most important thing, to honor not only our dead, but also our living in respect to the military and armed forces that gave everything for our country. For me, having been in the military and being retired in the military, it's, it's more of a day of remembrance. It's an opportunity for me to think about friends that have lost uh, in the invasion of Panama, in Desert Shield, Desert Storm, 
uh, Operation Enduring Freedom, what are their families and what are their children thinking today? Uh, I serve with a lot of people who are no longer here. Uh, and it's an opportunity for me to, to simply just stop what I'm doing, catch my breath, and say a prayer for them uh, and their families. And happy Memorial Day. I remember that it used to be called Decoration Day that started right after the Civil War. I do remember that I really wasn't there then. It started later for me. And so 1971, they changed it to Memorial Day to recognize uh, soldiers and uh, women and men lost during active duty that had died. And in 73, they started Memorial Day uh, as a national holiday and uh, excuse me, 71. And 73 is when I started active duty myself. And so at that point is when the meaning of Memorial Day started changing for me rather than a national holiday, a day off or something, uh, when I started losing friends. And so now to this day, it's a pretty important day for me to remember my friends that I had that, that lost their lives when I'm active duty. And so, uh, so now it has my attention. So I hope it does yours as well. If we look to the answer as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers, bearing crosses or stars of David, they add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom.
Yeah, yeah, he's mine. I, <laughs> that a kid? I told him too. I was like, you know, that song just reverence. There's no way. Don't jazz it up. Don't church it up. Don't do nothing. He did at the end, though. I heard that. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. All right. Um, look, I, there's things I shouldn't tell on myself, but I'm fixing to. Um, I'm scared to death. I don't. I and pastor asked me. I think it was November. Um, you could have told me yesterday. It'd have been okay. I hadn't. <laughs> I don't know how many, you owe me some hours of sleep. Um, I ain't scared of snakes, spiders, water, heights. I've never backed down from a man in my life. I'm terrified to be up here right now. I hate this. He, uh, he asked me if I was going to have a keynote, and um, I didn't answer him. I just looked at him, and I was thinking to myself, ain't no way I'm singing. There's no way I, I will not sing. And he said, I said, no, sir, I don't believe. He said, well, you're going to talk. I said, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, I'm going to talk. Um, yeah. But I tell my boys, um, and, and sincerely, I tell my boys, courage, real courage, is when you're scared, but you do it anyway. Um, now, my wife told me, stand up straight, um, speak slow, concise. Um, don't lean on the podium, make eye contact. Okay, I, I probably won't, y'all. Um, my name's Jay Jackson. Um, that was my son, Cade, and uh, pretty impressed, 12-year-old. Um, I'm, uh, I'm from Rose Pine. I'm not really from Rose Pine. I'm from Kansas, and uh, it's important that I tell you all that because uh, I was helping a guy at the gas station one day. He broke down, and we was doing what we could. Couldn't get him fixed. Finally, I, you know, I said, hey, look, I'll, uh, I'll go run to the house, get a trailer. We'll get your truck off the road. Um, and he said, no, it's all right. Um, he said, where are you from? I, and I said, Rose Pine. And he, and he looked at me a couple, three or four more times. And he said, a Jackson from Rose Pine? I said, uh, yes, sir. And I said, well, I'm not from Rose Pine. I, we moved here. I'm from Kansas. And he said, okay, son. He says, listen, you make sure you tell everybody you're not from Rose Pine. I get, maybe there's not some of the best Jacksons in Rose Pine. I don't know. Um, but I, uh, I am from Kansas. Um, We've moved here recently. My wife's from here, and I got to tell y'all thank you so much for welcoming us. Um, you know, you, you've 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 shown more love to my family than uh, than uh, a lot of my family. So, and and, and sincerely, I um, I thank you so much for that. Um, uh, and it, I don't take any of that for granted. I really don't. I, I I'm sure I owe my job to somebody sitting in this church right now, and I work every day. No, and I owe my job to somebody in this church. Um, okay, well, good morning. Um, listen, I got notes here. Um, I don't need them. I really don't, but I'm going to use them because I didn't win every fight, okay? I can get distracted pretty easy. Um, but uh, America is a blessed nation, and we know that. Um, you know, in most of the uh, world, poverty isn't a problem. It's it's because they don't even understand that they are in poverty. That that's 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 uh, just a way of life for them. Um, so we may not always feel it, but if you woke up in America this morning, you um, you're probably one of the richest people in the world. You know. Okay. This morning we had no um, no fear of coming to church. None. Um, no real difficulties. I mean, I know some of your kids didn't cooperate, and. Uh, you know, maybe the shirt you wanted didn't get cleaned this week, so you, you didn't wear it, but n no real problems, um, <laughs> no threats. And adversely to that, there's no threats that if you didn't come to church this morning, you could be executed, you know. Uh, you, you, that's just fact and part of the world. You know, you'd be jailed, you'd be beat, you'd be caned, you'd be whatever. Um, so God gave us this free will, and he made us this way. But it's up to us to keep it this way. Um, okay. We know this. We know we're free, and we know we live in the greatest country in the world. And I, that was pretty awesome to hear Ronald Reagan, but I was scared to death you stole my quote. Uh, this, is, this is from Ronald Reagan. Okay. Freedom is never more than one generation from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, 
and hand it on to them to do the same. We're quick to label groups um, of kids, mostly by age groups, you know, millennials, Gen X, the greatest generation, um, so forth. But uh, it, I promise everybody I served with after September 1st, 2001, um, they volunteered. And nobody volunteered not knowing what they was fixing to get into. So um, I, I didn't mention this earlier. I did serve. I was in the Army for uh, 23 years. I'm retired. I retired in December um, 2014 as Sergeant Major J. Allen Jackson. I was an Army Ranger. Um, Isaiah 6, 8, I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, Lord, send me. And I'm not sure that God ever sent me, but the Army did um, <laughs> several times. To five continents, 17 countries, Six deployments, that's about 60 months of war. And I'm not sure God sent me to any of them places at all, at all. But uh, I am positive that he protected me while I was there. Yeah. Right. Um, a, a great dear friend of mine, and that's one thing about the Army, you got great dear friends everywhere. You know, I've... I've I, fortunate, unfortunate, I think it's a life lesson, but uh, I'll bet you I've been to as many churches that I've called my church as anybody. You know, that's, it's my church while I'm going there, and then three years later, that's my church while I'm going there, two years later, that's my church while I'm going there. So uh, um, I've got a broad spectrum. But, but my friend Cole Osler, he, uh, he's a youth pastor at the church we attended at the time, um, great friend of mine. Uh, he uh, took the 91st Psalm and shrunk it down on his copier small enough and laminated that thing and gave it to me right before I left uh, to Afghanistan one time. He says, uh, you know, keep it on you, read it, believe it. Um, so I did. Um, I took that thing and I put it, our uniforms, I, I wore a plate carrier or a vest or something, ITV, some sort of a body armor. And a lot of people put things in their armor, a picture, a something or another, but I never did this. I, I put it inside my pocket, and that thing was right over my heart right here. Our pockets on our uniforms were right there. I put that thing in that pocket. I wore that thing uh, every day, and it turned out to be for about 15 months. Um, and uh, it was in a rough part of the world, y'all. This was uh, uh, RC East in Afghanistan. That's Konar, Nuristan, Jalalabad. Um, You've heard of these places because you've seen them on TV. They make movies about this, and uh, they also make medals of honor about this. Okay, that's, that's maybe the worst, most kinetic place on the planet of Earth. And um, you know that thing? I wore the sides up on it, it, it. The laminate came up, and I sweat through it, and it was covered in blood and, and dirt, and none of the blood mine. And um, I was protected the whole time I was there, and I know this. Um, uh, a lot of things I, I don't talk about, um, you know, I just, that's what I used to do. Um, not, but uh, uh, I'm going to say this. Um, if you've ever been in a car wreck, y'all know how it happened. Like, it was that quick, but it seemed like it was in slow motion. You can remember every single detail of that car wreck. Um, well, this was, uh, this is a war story. I don't talk, I don't do this much, but... Uh, this that we hit an IED and we were stopped and you know it's, it's over it, it, we hit an IED and we're back up and I was standing outside of an MRAP uh, it's a large uh, armored truck and I was standing on the door and uh, something you know you, you just don't do and I was just, yeah, wait, waiting and waiting and waiting and you do a lot of that in the army waiting and there's a secondary explosion and it went off uh, I don't know um, 10, 15 meters from our truck, and I saw, I saw a chunk of something, um, size of a golf ball maybe. It was super slow motion. It was an explosion. It wasn't slow motion. Super slow motion, and it passed that close to my head. And I said, you know, there's a, there's no reason I'm alive right now. There really ain't. That should have killed me. And so, why ain't I dead? And I got to figure that's because God's not through with me yet. So. All right. And often time I wonder why I'm in Louisiana. I don't know, but I'm patient. I'm patient.
Uh, Look, I, I know I won't win a Bible quiz, I guarantee it, but I do have faith and patience. And I'll, I'll figure God brought me through to this season for a reason, and uh, I'm waiting. Um, okay, there's a, you know, a lot of, um, I'll say a lot of us sitting in here um, would, consider it, it would consider the army a dark place if you saw the army. You really would. There, there's... Uh, you know, it's it's what 18-year-old type A testosterone-fueled boys do, and uh, you know, there's there's um, they uh, listen. They need more than anything your prayer to keep them safe until they figure it out. That's that's um, if you can do anything, it's that, and uh, and they do figure it out. Okay, experience is what you get right after you needed it. Hey, that's. <laughs> That's when you gain experience. Like I could have used that yesterday. Um, now I know. And and uh, and then one day that 18-year-old's 24 and he's in charge of a squad and he he does have a head on his shoulders. So you get them to that point and they'll do better. Um, but these wild kids. Uh, listen, John 15:13. There's no greater love than to lay down one's life for a friend, and they know that every day. Every day they go to work. Okay, on Veterans Day, we acknowledge our veterans. It's patriotic, it's a parade, it's a celebration. Uh, the flags fly high. Um, and tomorrow's also a holiday, and we get Monday off. Uh, we barbecue, we go to the lake, we play baseball. There's 20% off on pain at, 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 at Sherwin-Williams, you know. At, at, that's, that's what Veterans Day is, to, or a Memorial Day is, you know, uh, to a lot of people. It, it, it really is. There's a baseball tournament. We're going fishing. We, it, that's, uh, that's what a lot of people associate with, with Memorial Day, um, you know, but it's, uh, it's not. Um, I, I think it was, I don't know the year. It, I think it was 2012, but I do know it was Specialist Bobby Gaylor, and this was a sharp kid. He was, uh, he was one of our RTOs, he was an infantryman, um, and this dude also had a degree in computer something or another, uh, and he was, that's your army, okay? This guy was, uh, you know, a geek, a computer geek, and well, he was also an infantryman, okay? So he was, that's your army. Um, we were in Baltimore in the airport, and we were on our way home from Afghanistan, and we looked rough, I guarantee it, you know? Uh, and we were eating at the Burger King in Baltimore. We was all pretty excited about that. Uh, and this guy, he, um, he, he, he was visiting with us. Where you guys coming from? Where you going? You know, where you been? Uh, that kind of stuff. And he wasn't judgmental. He was inquisitive. But uh, not everybody is, you know, not everybody's from the flyover states. It's the East Coast. They don't think like we do. Um, certainly didn't think like we thought that day. But uh, he, he asked. He asked Bobby, and he couldn't have picked. You know that was ordained. He couldn't. He 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 picked the wrong person, um, but he did. And 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 he was asked. He said, "What's it like to be uh, to be at war?" And Bobby didn't miss a beat. That kid was quick, sharp like a rat's tail. He says, uh, "He says, oh, Mister, the army's at war. America's at the mall." And uh, that summed it up. Hey, tomorrow is Memorial Day, and uh, Memorial Day is a day of remembrance for those who have died in service of the United States. That's that's the ultimate sacrifice. Okay, them uh, flags don't fly high tomorrow. They fly half staff. Okay, it's it's not a celebration. It's 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 solemn event. Um, you know maybe that's why uh, it's 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 easy to barbecue and go to the lake and and uh, enjoy your day off because nobody wants to face uh, their mortality. But if it wasn't for that ultimate sacrifice, uh, those things others choose tomorrow, they wouldn't be possible. Um. I've, I've seen a lot of killing and a lot of death, a bunch of it, more than I want to remember at all. And uh, a lot of the pictures I, I got at home, you know, it's, uh, they're heroes now. They're, that, uh, you know, they're, they're friends that ain't with us no more. And that's, that's rough, you know, and you learn about it secondhand, thirdhand, you know, it's, it's, you talk to a friend, somebody, finds my wife on Facebook and says, are you Jake? Yes. Oh, mercy. And I'm thinking, oh, no mercy. Don't, don't tell on me. But uh, most of them are pretty good guys. They, uh, they just want to get in contact with their friend from 15, 20 years ago, you know, and remember things. But 
you start talking to them, you text, and it's, hey, did you hear about Carpel? Uh, no, what? He, you know, did you hear about Bearden? No, what? And, and man, you think, that's, that's a lot of friends. Um, but uh, when you're in combat and that happens, you, um, you deal with it. You don't, it's different. It, you're, you're not disconnected from it. You're, it's, it's right there, and you deal with it. You deal with it at the time. You take a knee. You remember them. Um, you, you pray if that's what you do. You replay every single event that happened, every technique, technique, procedure, every bit of it. You do all of it because you do it because you want to prevent it from ever happening again. That's what you do. You don't, you don't, you're not dwelling on the death. And then you figure it out and you get mad and you regroup and you plan and then you go get yours back. And uh, that's, that's what warriors do. And you can do that when you're in combat. You throw a rock at me and I'll shoot you. Um, you know, you... You, you, you shoot at me, and we'll bomb you. And uh, yeah, that's the mentality of your... Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, you get one of ours, and, and we mad. We go get a hundred of yours. And that's how you deal with it when you're there. And not a single bit of what I just said qualifies me at all to speak about Memorial Day. I don't believe it does. Um, but what I'm fixing to tell you, and I'm, I'm right now at this point, Chance said, how long are you going to talk? I said, man, I don't know. I'll aim for 15, 20 minutes. I might get excited and talk and might be three or four minutes. Um, so we got to, if I have to eject, he's going to go to the bullpen and give him a relief pitcher. But, uh, but at this point, listen, um, I probably will. I'm going to do my best, but I probably will uh, sneak on out of that door crying here in a minute. So I must tell y'all, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, uh, for allowing me to share this with you. Um, that, uh, you know, at this point it's been easy. Um, but I'm going to tell you a story that's uh, not going to be easy. Okay, I've never b been here and faced the death of a, of a soldier. You know, there's uh, on that end of the world, you, you deal with it differently. Um, but, and uh, you know, there's things about this I remember so vivid, so vivid like they happened yesterday. And some things is a complete fog until I talked to a friend and he says, oh yeah, I remember that? It's like, yeah, I didn't even remember that. Um, you know, some, some minutes seem like years and some weeks seem like seconds. And, uh, whew, this was a, uh, this was one of those weeks. Um, a soldier worked for me, Staff Sergeant Travis Bachman. This guy, he was something else. He was from Oklahoma. Um, we hit it off. I'm from Kansas. He was a Sooner fan. We went back and forth a lot, a whole lot. Um, but I love this kid. He was, he, was, he was a great guy. He really was. Uh, he was an artilleryman, um, a Ford observer. And he uh, had the opportunity to go <clears throat> Excuse me. He had the opportunity to go to Iraq um, in a different capacity. He um, he volunteered to deploy with a different unit, not the unit we was in, uh, a different unit to go uh, uh, do. Um, he was going to do traditional infantry squad leader work. Okay, he was going to do mounted security. He was in charge of a patrol. Um, he was excited about that. You know, he he, he asked, hey, "Is there something? I, is there something I can do?" You know, he said, "I'm not an infantryman. I'm a forward observer." It's like, you, you got the skill set, you know, you'll do fine. You'll do, you'll do real well. Um, he was a great leader. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I mentored him. He was, he was one of my soldiers. I, 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 like I say, we was, you know, I, I didn't favor him, but I, I, I liked him a lot. Um, yeah. Man, he was a good guy. He, uh, um, he came home mid-tour leave. He looked me up. Uh, uh, we, we visited. He told me about... Uh, you know, told him about his, his, his mission and, you know, what he was doing. Um, he was, he was, he was liking it a lot. You know, he was, he was good at it. Uh, he, uh, he left. He got to come back about three months later. His daughter was born. It's pretty rare to get to come home twice in one deployment. But uh, where he was at in Iraq, they was, it was pretty close to, uh, pretty close to biop so he could catch planes in and out. It wasn't, it wasn't difficult and the Army's pretty good about that. You know, his, his baby girl was born while he was deployed. He got to come home and, and be there for, uh, 
for a week. That's pretty cool. I, uh, he kind of in and out quick, uh, but I got to see him there, and he, you know, he was getting excited. He was, he was, he was short and final there. He had about three months left in in uh, Iraq, and he was uh, be on his way home. And uh, he called me about oh, I don't know, maybe thirty days before he come home, and just. You know, I was driving. I was pulled over. I was on the side of the road. I was there long enough that a, a highway patrolman pulled up, asked for things. All right, see, yes, sir, it's fine. I'm just visiting with the. He's like from Iraq, yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, they got cell phones too. Um, my cell phone worked better in Afghanistan than it works in Derid or the uh, <laughs> cheaper too. But uh, so Travis called me. I was I was sitting on the side of the road. We was visiting. He was like. Man, I'll be home 30 days. You know what's going on in the unit? What's 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 my job looking like? What am I gonna? What are we doing? What's what's next? You know, I'm excited. I, I was like, man, he was uh, he was ready to come home. I could tell. You know, you get that way. It's it's you, you're excited to be there, and you you try to make days count. But man, every now and then you just counting days. Like oh, it's time to go home. Had enough of this. Uh, Travis didn't make it home. He, uh, he was 15 days from, from returning, and uh, the other unit that was relieving them had already arrived. Uh, they were doing their right seat, left seat. He was in uh, Mosul, Iraq. Um, he was doing his, his transfer uh, to, the, to his relief. Um, you know, they, uh, you ride in the right seat for a while, and they figure out what's going on, then they ride in the right seat for a while, and they're in charge, and you just coach them through the process and make sure they're ready. Well, uh, this, this, you know, this was dangerous, um, and Travis knew this, so he stayed in the left seat during the transition, and um, that's, you know, it sounds like I'm just saying left seat, right seat, but it's literal, literal in that vehicle, left seat, right seat, where you put, position yourself in that vehicle. And um, he did it because he needed to drive because he knew this was a, a dangerous place. And um, these guys just wasn't quite ready for it. Remember, experience is what you get after you needed it. They didn't have it. He did. He put himself in that position to protect them until they were ready to receive. Um, he, was, uh, he was killed by an IED. Um, and it wasn't just an IED. Um, IEDs are general, okay? IEDs are a bullet that says to whom it may concern. Um, this, but he was killed by um, a formed penetrator. And uh, this piece of work is, it's, it's actually an explosively charged projectile that penetrates, I mean, we're, we're fighting a, a, a real life thinking human being, okay? That war is chess. They do something, we do something. They do something, we do something. Usually we're reactive to what they, um, what they throw at us. We react to defeat. Um, they throw something at us, we react to defeat. EFPs are terrifying because there's not a big defense for that. There's not. This thing hits, it explodes, the projectile goes into the, uh, the, the cab of the vehicle, and um, that bullet has your name on it. And that particular day, it had Travis's name on it. And he was sitting in that left seat when he should have been in that right seat. You know, we don't, we don't know why. Um, nobody will ever. But uh, that penetrator, and I knew the gunner in the vehicle behind him when it happened. He knew, uh, he knew I was pretty tight with Travis. He, uh, he looked me up, told me, told me what he could tell me, what he knew. You know, it's foggy. You don't know. Um, but uh, nobody in that vehicle was injured. Nobody was hurt. And uh, Travis was killed right there. And uh, that's hard um, when you're on this side. And that's the first time I ever experienced that. Uh, the only time I don't ever, uh, you know, it was, I got that phone call. It was a Saturday. He, he died August 1st, 2007. Um, it was a Saturday, and, and uh, a friend of mine, a guy who worked for both of us, um, Seth Sergeant Jason Good, he called, and he says, hey, man, um, he said, uh, Travis, Travis killed in Iraq. 
And I knew he wasn't kidding, but I was like, don't mess with me, you know. Um, he says, the guy I'm not. It's, it's Travis killed in Iraq, yeah. That was, uh, like I say, it was Saturday. And, um, you know, we, we, we don't know what to do. We don't know, there's not a playbook for that. Um, we went in uh, Saturday. didn't have to. We went in. Um, next thing you know, there's, you know, there's 15, 20 people just, just hanging around the shop there, uh, drinking coffee, no, wondering what to do next, you know, what, what, what now? Um, and before you knew it, we had this whole entire funeral detail planned right there. It was something else. Um, he, he, he came home in about a week. Uh, I think it was his funeral was on August 9th. Um, you know, I, uh, it was a hard, hard, hard week. Um, I was uh, honored to be the uh, NCIC of that funeral detail. And um, in the Army, Rangers bury Rangers. Um, and I've been part of a lot of funeral details, unfortunately. But never, ever, ever was it my friend laying there. It was, uh, you know, it was usually a veteran. Um, who lived his full life, who was 70 years old, whose family was celebrating. Um, you know, it, 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 was, it wasn't my friend. Um, so this funeral, was, it, was, it, was, it was hard, it was personal, it was different. Um, you know, you, you're in the Army, it's, it's not hard to, to stick your chest out and, um, and, 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 and be what that family thinks you're supposed to be. You know, a hard soldier standing there, composed, professional, Man, it wasn't that case. This was this was hard, hard, hard. Um, we was in Travis's hometown, and uh, and the uh, they brought him in, um, brought him in on on, on a on a small charter uh, jet, landed there at that small airport in that small town. And oh boy, it was hot that day. And I knew Travis was laughing at us. Uh, we was you know full dress uniform things hot enough like we're in a wool blanket um sweat just pouring and uh and we positioned ourselves the army had a um the army had a detail that the way it works is progressive they 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 bring him to the country they prepare um they prepare the soldier then they move him to where his final rest place is going to be um, they bring a team that travels with that. These, these are, you know, these are honor guard. These are what they do every day, all day, professional. And uh, they are out on the tarmac at this airport, and they secure um, Travis's remains, move him to that hearse, um, and we pos we just positioned ourselves. We don't know what to do, you know. We just position ourselves um, on the tarmac, and, and next thing we know, you know, the 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 family kind of positioned themselves around us. And uh, it was one of them surreal moments. Um, I got to hear his, uh, his son, Tyler. He, uh, uh, four or five at the time, he's the same age as Jace. Um, he just, you know, four-year-old, don't know what's going on, but he just, I just hear him asking, uh, asking his mom, um, is, is that my daddy? Is my daddy on that plane? You know, whew, that's a hard stand there. And, uh, yeah, and you just think, that baby, Brand new baby, never gonna know his dad, her dad. Um, that boy, he gonna grow up, never know how just great his dad is and what his dad gave up, you know, so we could barbecue. Um, that was that was tough. Um, we moved Travis. Uh, we followed that hearse back to the funeral home. Met the funeral director. Uh, he uh, had more questions than we did, you know. We show up, all right, we're looking for help here, looking for guidance. Um, he's like, hey, man, I'm, this is a military funeral. We don't know. We, we don't either. Uh, we figured it out. We got through it. Um, the, um, some of y'all may be familiar with this. Uh, 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 a lot of you sit with bodies. Um, so is the Army. We actually guard a body. We don't sit with a body. Um, so we... Um, we we uh we made a, a duty roster real quick. Um, each of us planned on taking an hour. We were gonna um, you know stay with stay with Travis. And uh, I took I took the first shift. Um, 
Uh, but there was no reason. There was 20 people in there, you know. There was nobody was going nowhere. You know, like I say, it was still, man, what's going on? Um, I knew, though, it's, yeah, I, I, was, I need to leave. I need to uh, go, uh, you know, get out, get some fresh air, uh, do, do whatever I need to do to get ready for tomorrow. Um, and I, I went up to tell my friend goodbye. And uh, somebody had put um, an Oklahoma Sooner wristwatch on him and had it right, just right there. He was in his, you know, the very soldiers in their dress blue uniform. And they had that thing right there where everybody could see. And I went up there and I just, I thought, you punk. He got the last word. <laughs> he did. He got the last word in on me. Didn't even know he got the last word in on me. Um, the, uh, you know, the funeral was, uh, I think it was two days later. Like I say, it's one of them moments where everything happened that fast and took forever. Um, and it was still hot, and I knew he was still laughing. And uh, I knew he was really laughing at some of them guys who you know, don't have a lot of dress uniforms. As a matter of fact, you have one dress uniform, and you hope to never, ever, ever wear it. Um, and here we were wearing them regularly for about three or four days, and it was hot. And uh, I knew he was laughing at some of those clowns washing their, washing their clothes in the shower or the sink, you know, and drying up with a hair dryer and uh, just do what you have to do. Um, uh, it was um, the church was it was a it was a it was a Southern Baptist church, large, big church, and that thing was overflowing. Um, every room in that building had somebody in there. Uh, it was a giant, giant ceremony. Um, and as much as I really don't like talking in front of people, I really don't like staying in front of a church, uh, you know, trying to take care of a, a funeral in front of a lot of people either. And I was wrecked up inside. I mean, I was trying to stay, trying to stay, but, uh, but I was a train wreck. Um, the, uh, the, the, the ceremony in the church was, was 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 over and um we were getting ready to move our brother and uh when um when you move a soldier every time he moves you know you you present arms order arms and then he moves um and uh man you could have heard a pin drop it was hard in there and i gave the command present arms and it was a, a real military command okay and uh man it was solemn we was there and uh and i went to give the command order arms which you know means relieve your salute uh and it wouldn't come out order it came out just fine i couldn't say arms couldn't do it couldn't do it it was Seconds. It really was seconds. That wasn't one of those felt like seconds. It was seconds. And it fell out of my mouth. It squeaked out arms. And uh, when it did, when I got tough enough to say that, when it did, I was flooded with relief. I don't know how. I know how. Um, I ain't naive. But, uh, you know, I got the strength at that moment. I got strong, strong, strong. I got just peace. And it came out, and I realized, you know, my friends at peace. Um, it it uh, it helped me so much right there. Uh, we moved to the cemetery. We um we did the graveside. You know, it's a uh, it's and that is tough. That's tough. I don't care if you're a complete stranger walking by. If you catch bagpipes playing Amazing Grace, you you um you choke up. When you hear taps, you choke up. And then when you hear a 21-gun salute, now the Army's pretty cool about this. They, they, they stop the service. They explain to everybody, this is what we do to honor our brother. But you're going to hear a gunshot, and it's going to be loud, and it's going to scare you. They, they really warn, they really warn uh, the procession. Um, and it don't matter. Pow! And it's it, baby. The tears, the cries, the widow, the, the parents... The everything and uh, 
and it didn't bother me. Um, you know, I, I just, I've nothing after, after front of that church, nothing bothered me. And uh, thank God, thank God. Because um, at that point, I got tough enough to be, uh, to be what everybody else needed. And, uh, and it was peaceful. Um, you know, the, the, the funeral's over. And uh, what a lot of us do, um, if you have the chance, you, uh, you know, you, 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 you go so by to your friend. He's, uh, you know, the flag's folded. Everybody's gone. We, um, you know, it turned out there was maybe 10, 15, 20 of us. Um, we gathered at his casket. Um, a lot of people, you know, put something in there. Uh, you name it, it goes in there. But a lot of people just take something and pin it on that casket. Um, you know, and uh, I got to lead my brothers in a, in a prayer right there for uh, for our fallen brother. And that's not me at all. I mean, I, it should be all of us, but that ain't me. I'm, I'm pretty introverted, honestly. I love visiting with people, but I'm not a... I'm not real, uh, it's just not me, but it was that day, and uh, I know uh, I know where that came from. You know, you open your mouth and the words just come out, and they, they where this, but it, um, it was, it was, it was, uh, it's pretty powerful, it's was, it was pretty incredible is what it was. Um, I just, I was, uh, I was honored, biggest honor of my military career right there, and, uh, and, and, you know, it'd be, a lot of people wouldn't, considering where I've been, what I did, um, you know, a lot of people, that was the biggest honor of your career, and it, it, it truly was. It truly was. Um, and that, uh, whew, I didn't think I'd get this far, I really didn't, um, but uh, that's, that's, that's Memorial Day to me. Um, the, um, that's, that's, that's my Memorial Day. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. What an incredible story. You may be seated. What an incredible story. This year, our goal for this service was to define what Memorial Day really means. What an incredible testimony to help us do that. I won't be here long, just a few minutes of remarks, and then we'll go to our picnic and have a good time. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. I know that was hard, but thank you so much. Today we remember, as we just heard, a story of someone who gave their life for us. We remember, and while we appreciate our veterans who are here with us today, and we have a church full of them, and all of the sacrifices that they've made, we reserve this weekend, and we reserve tomorrow in the memory of those that paid the ultimate sacrifice. Those who are unable to attend this service with their family today, who are unable to enjoy our picnic following service, who are unable to enjoy barbecue tomorrow, who are unable to go to the lake with their families, those who are unable to enjoy the 20% off of paint at Sherwin-Williams, those who died to ensure that we as a nation can enjoy freedom, freedom to speak, freedom to pursue our goals, freedom to worship, those who died for us. And in honor of their sacrifice, we must take a step back and examine the freedoms that we often take for granted. For example, we are here. We are not here in secret. We do not have to hide the fact that we are here. There's a big sign out front identifying this building as a place of worship. Our singers and musicians play loud and sing freely. Our pulpit is not fettered by a dictatorial government. We are free to worship. We are free to clap our hands. We are free to shout with a voice of triumph. 
And I remember in high school, going all the way back to high school days, there was an individual in my high school class who refused to stand for the pledge every morning at school. And I asked that individual, why exactly do you refuse to stand for the pledge? To which they replied, I don't believe in war. And I said, well, you better be thankful for war because it was war that gave you the right to sit while we stand for the pledge. What we have to understand is this freedom that we enjoy is not free. It was paid for by the sacrifice of men and women. It was paid for on foreign soil and here in our own country. It started with the shot heard around the world, which signified the beginning of a revolution. It continued at the Battle of Gettysburg as brother fought brother and friend fought friend. It was earned with a charge up San Juan Hill during the Spanish-American War. It was fought for at places like Somme, Marne, and Cambrai during World War I. It was purchased on the beaches of Normandy in World War II. It was fought for in the Korean War and at Vietnam. Also in the Gulf War in Iraq and now in the global war on terror, through our, throughout our history, many have sacrificed so that we can sit here today. And may we never forget that freedom isn't free. Kelly Strong in a poem said it like this, I watched the flag pass by one day. It fluttered in the breeze. A young Marine saluted it and then stood at ease. I looked at him in uniform so young, so tall, so proud, with hair cut square and eyes alert. He'd stand out in any crowd. I thought how many men like him had fallen through the years. How many died on foreign soil. How many mothers' tears. How many pilots' planes shot down. How many foxholes were soldiers' graves. No, freedom is not free. I heard the sound of taps one night when everything was still. I listened to that bugler play and it felt and felt a sudden chill. I wondered just how many times that taps had meant amen when a flag had draped a coffin of a brother or a friend. I thought of all the children of the mothers and the wives, of fathers and sons and husbands with interrupted lives. Thought about a graveyard at the bottom of a sea, of unmarked graves in Arlington. No, freedom isn't free. We honor their memory today. We honor it by how we live and how we enjoy our freedoms. We honor them by acknowledging and being thankful for our freedom. May we never forget the sacrifices that were paid. May we never forget as Israel did when Gideon died in Judges 8, chapter 8, verses 32 through 35. It says, And Gideon the son of Joash died in a good old age and was buried in the sepulcher of Joash, his father, and Orpha and Abizrites. And it came to pass as soon as Gideon was dead that the children of Israel turned again and went whoring after Balaam and Babareth their God. And the children of Israel remembered not the Lord their God who had delivered them out of the hands of all their enemies. Neither showed they kindness to the house of Jerubbabel, namely Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had showed unto Israel. Gideon was a reluctant soldier. When called upon to lead the armies of Israel, he reminded God that his tribe was the least, his family was the least of his tribe, and he was the least in his family. He literally was the last person who should lead a rebellion against the Midianites. But like so many in our own history, as you heard today, he answered the call. He delivered Israel out of bondage. He judged well, but when he died, Israel turned their back on God and refused to honor the memory of Gideon. As soon as he was dead, they forgot about the sacrifices which he had made for their freedom. May we never act as Israel did and forget the sacrifice that got us here. And I must point out that sacrificing one's life for freedom didn't start in our nation's history. No, it started over 2,000 years ago. It actually started at the beginning of time when Adam and Eve failed in the garden. It took a blood sacrifice to cover their sin. And each year, animals were killed to cover the sin of the people until the Messiah came and dwelt among us. He came to teach us how to live, but that's not all. He was arrested. He was beaten. He hung on a cross, and he shed his blood for our freedom. During what we call his last supper, he took a cup and said, This is my blood, and as off as ye drink, do it in remembrance of me. He took bread, and he broke it, and he said it was his flesh, and as off as ye do eat, do in remembrance of me. He died so that we could be free from sin. He died so that we could live for eternity with him. May we never forget the sacrifice that was paid at Calvary. Jesus not only told us with words, but showed us with action that greater love hath no man than he that lay down a life for a friend. This holiday is about remembering. 
May we never forget the sacrifice that our fallen heroes have paid. May we never forget the sacrifice that our Savior made at Calvary. Freedom isn't free. It's purchased with the blood of those who answered the call. Just as our heroes who have died for us, Jesus also died for us. May we never forget. I wonder today if we, and this is, I told them today, I did, we're not going to sing a song. They're just going to play some music. I wonder today at the close of this service, if we can just guest, if you're a first time here, I invite you to join us at this altar. And if we can just lift our hands and be thankful for the freedom that we enjoy through the sacrifice of many. Can you do that with me today? Can you join me at the front of this church? Just lift your hands and we be thankful for the sacrifice, for the freedom that we enjoy through the, all the sacrifices that have been made. Thank you, God, that I can come to an altar today. Thank you that I can lift my hands. Thank you that I am free to pray to you and to worship you. I'm so thankful for the sacrifice you made, Jesus. And I'm thankful for the sacrifice of men and women throughout our history who have given me this right to walk down to the front of this church, lift up my hands and say, God, I love you. I praise you. I magnify you.